All right, hello everyone. Um, all right, I'll start things off. All right, has everyone heard about Cyberpunk 2077? The game they released in 2020 that then released game kept on crashing, there were issues, and it was overall a really horrible gaming experience. That's saying that like there wasn't enough time to finish the game. We are going to learn how to solve that issue. My name is Camille Prats, and today we're going to be talking about project management and game development. So we're going to be going over a few things. What is project management? How does it stand in the industry? How can I apply it to my personal work? What is good and bad project management? A few summary of what happened in the presentation and a question and answer session. So what is project management? Project management consists on planning and organizing a project and or its resources. When you have the role of project management, it is your sole purpose to make sure that you get from point A to point B, making sure that you and your team release a viable product. You are also the bridge of communication between different departments, making sure that artists and programmers are informed of the process. So we know what project management is, but how does it apply in the industry? When I was working over the summer with Mass Digi, they gave us a game that we had to add two core mechanics to, multiplayer and save and load. So they gave us the base code. They gave us a dirty build that had code built in one single script. So we talked things out on our team and we spoke to the other people on the other side if it was possible that we could rebuild the game. And so we decided we had two to three months to make the game from scratch and add those core mechanics. So we had to plan accordingly. By when should we have that game completed? When should we start our multiplayer and save and load? What takes priority? What can we scope things out and in? And what should we focus on? Aside from that, I also worked as a project manager on another team. They wanted to make a game that had Candy Crush mechanics, a Zen garden, and a shop. And they wanted to have all of that under two months. The thing was that they had three programmers and 15 artists. It was an out of scope idea. And eventually they had a roadblock. So we all had to meet up and decide what things should we sacrifice and what things should we focus on. Eventually, we decided that we should focus on the main core mechanic of the game, which is the Candy Crush aesthetic. Making sure that we merge things correctly in the field of the game is good. And then focus later on, on the garden aspect of things and decorating your area. And finally, making sure that everyone knows what's going on. In that same team, we had issues of communication. In the programming side of things, they hit roadblocks and the art team keep on making assets for the game. The issue here is that they were making so many assets that it got to a point that some of these assets would not be applied into the game. So the artist spoke to me, we're not getting a dirty bill for the game. We don't know what's going on the programmer's side. So the artists and programmers all met up and we decided to come to a conclusion. Artists would, would go to make asks for something different that are for the main gameplay. Meanwhile, the programmers work on how to fix that roadblock and eventually re reach a point where we can create that viable product. All right, so we know what project management is and how it applies in the industry, but I'm just one person creating a game. I don't have a team of 200 people or 20 people on me. I just wanna make something to put on my portfolio and make sure that attracts people so I can get hired. Well, here are a few things that I think would be great to apply to your workflow. First of all, setting a project timeline. Currently, I'm working on MQP with Jeff and we are doing a great job with our project timeline. Our, this project timeline helps us set a schedule for things. It helps us get a sense of time. How, much, well, how many things do we need to do? By when should we do them? What different sections do we need to have, have covered? 
and by when. For example, in Jeff's MQP, we have roughs, we have revisions, cleanups, page layouts, and printouts. So we have to go through all of those different sections. And based on different events and activities that are going throughout the year, we have to place ourselves based on the things that we have to produce. For AlphaFest, we had to print out a book, a sample of the book. We had roughs and we had finished, uh, we had finished artworks. And so we wanted to get some feedback on that. So from there, we kept on building stuff. And that's how we're able to stay organized. All right, we have our timeline and we know by when to do things, but how do we keep track of what each person is doing? May I present to you the Kanban board? For those of you that have gone to SIP, you know what a Kanban board is. You breathed it in and out for two months. But for those of you that don't know, a Kanban board is a to-do list. It's separated between things that need to be done, are being done, and have already been done. MassDigi makes sure that you are doing a Kanban board. It is divided between artists and programmers. Let's say red post-it notes for programmers and blue post-it notes for artists. Artists would write down, do idle animations for the player character. Programmers would write down, make the character controller, and things like that. And they would grab post-it notes and put them on different sections of the board. And then everyone on the team would be aware of what is going on. All right, we are organized and know what is going on. So we've got it already built. What do we do with it? Let's ask for feedback. I know this is something that a lot of people tell you, but it is very important to know. Because once you're looking at something for so long, there are things you can get lost in. You're so focused on this one core mechanic and then you lose all sense of the main gameplay. Let's say you're building a roguelike dungeon and you have a level design that you wanna implement, but you have been focused on specifically the character at the character AI. The enemies you're gonna, you're gonna be um, interacting with. And so once you give that game to play test, your playstations are gonna tell you, I don't know, it felt too linear. I wanted to see myself exploring that dungeon. I didn't get a sense of the game that you wanted to present. So then you go back to the drawing board and you ask yourself, how can we make the level design a lot more engaging to our players? And how can we achieve that goal we want to achieve? Now we have, we know how to organize ourselves. We know how to make sure everyone knows what's going on. And we know what to do with our feedback. So let's review a few things. What can be good and bad project management? A good project manager is always aware of scope. I'm pretty sure everyone here knows what scope is, right? What's scope? All right. Scope is basically a dial that you pull up and down based on how much time you have. Going out of scope can be a project that you had very grandeur ideas, but you weren't able to complete all of them. And the, and the low scope can be something where you had too little to do and you focused so much on something that it felt too small of a game. It, there could have been so much more, but it just felt empty. There was a lackluster of things. So a good project manager will make sure that a game that is being made has a balance of that. You want to create a game? Let's make sure that we keep at least the minimum viable product where the player can feel immersed in the basic idea that you wanted. Aside from that, a project manager should always be a bridge of communication between departments. Make sure that people from different departments are, are in informed. Artists and programmers and people in the production are focused on their sole role. They're not focused on communicating that to other people. They just wanna get their own job done. So you are that bridge between that gap. Artists are making assets and they don't know what to do next. You talk to the programmers of what's going on right now and you make sure this is what's going on. To make assets for this one thing that needs to be done. And so you have all those things, but maybe you're running out of time. You don't know what to do. So you look for ideas. 
maybe not every idea is good. But once in a while, you'll get something that maybe might save your game. Maybe you wanted to have a game that had a bunch of different bosses, two villages, and a very expanse open world. But you don't have time for that. So from the idea that you get, someone maybe suggests, what if we just have one boss, one village, and a smaller expanse area to explore? That's a lot, reach that's a lot more reachable. And that way, you can create a game that you can be satisfied with, and so can your players. So let's review. We found that what project management was, we know how that applies in the industry. We know how to apply this to our own personal projects and also what is good and bad project management. These are a few things that can help save Cyberpunk 2077 and can also save yours. Thank you. What? What do you do as a project manager when your team is unresponsive? If they're not giving input like you're looking for, or even if you're adjusting your goals, they're not really communicating that. The best you can do as a project manager when that happens is just talk to your team directly. Maybe you send them a message, but they're not responding. So the best thing you can do is just show up and just ask, hey, there's something going on and you're not communicating with me. How can we fix that? We want to make sure that you explain specifically that this is for the project and that the sole purpose is to make sure that the project is made. So let's fix this conflict in communication so that way we can move forward. Yes. Can you repeat that question? I can barely hear. What is a producer's role in making sure we don't overmanage or get in the way of actually making the game through too much micromanagement? For producer, it is good to have different roles. So a good thing that like you are also in SIP. So, you know, having art leads and like programmer leads and having an overall producer. So then each section can stay in, stay in touch and make sure that one team is aware of one thing. So for artists not to create too many assets and stay aware of what's going on, producer communicating that the programmer team is having issues with, with programming. So maybe focus on making assets for this one thing that we already have done. For the art, for the artists that they don't know what they're concepting for, talking to the producer and then the producer talking to the programmers. So it's more of like, do you don't micromanage, more of like you give roles to the people in those teams so that that way you're not doing everything. Yes. Let's say you're managing solo project. How do you keep yourself accountable so you stay on the team? A good way to do that is by setting up a timeline. That is one of my personal favorites and the Kanban board. Setting up that timeline helps to like set a reminder for yourself of how much time you have. Something that I have done for myself, I'm currently working on a personal project, it's an animated film. I have set myself seven weeks and I only have seven weeks to do that film. So each week I'm gonna make sure that I have a storyboard or something to show. So. I have that timeline. I set up how much time I have and by when should I have that done. By one week, I'll have a storyboard. I'll revise that and by the second week, I'll have that finished. From then on, move on to that and so on, so on. All right, thank you so much.